of uh, Maori and Pacifica kids in Otara, and you gave me uh, uh, proper support or, or lots of support and resources, what would their potential be, uh, and how would we go about demonstrating that? Um, so the journey that I'm going to share today just shows a little bit about uh, the networking and then the science community uh, that I've had to connect with in order to uh, provide the opportunities uh, and the resources for my students uh, to fully, fu uh, fully show their potential. So educational science ecosystem, to me that's just a variety of groups that are interconnected um, and some of the, the main ones uh, would be a university, uh, science organizations, so like core research, uh, government, NGOs, nonprofit, uh, businesses, um, community members are, are an integral part of that, and then obviously our uh, school community. Sorry for these slides, they uh, a little bit wonky here, I think, through uh, Google Slides. But um, I think the, the most important thing about uh, where, where I would um, come into to the ecosystem of uh, my school community is that uh, the relationships need to be meaningful. So any meaningful partnership within an ecosystem is mutually beneficial. Uh, you need to identify the benefits for both groups involved and clearly articulate them from the beginning. Um, often starting with a simple visit to one of these organizations will lead to more resources later. Um, and I'll go over some of the examples. Um, but it's really, really important that when you're meeting and you're building this network, uh, that you're able to, to identify what it is you're, um, you're looking for and what you are able to provide. <coughs> Often, um, we think we're not able to provide anything as a school. Um, you know, we're, we're often just uh, using the resources, but a lot of these organizations are looking um, for uh, community initiatives in order to show um, that their company is doing these type of deeds and, and has uh, some corporate um, morals to it. Um, so that in itself can be a lot um, that you can provide to a variety of groups. So one of the first groups that we've started to work with was the Two Canada program at uh, Auckland University. So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's um, a program that supports uh, Pacifica and Maori students at Auckland Uni, uh, basically within um, the STEM department. So you're looking at engineering, um, businesses put in there, uh, maths, um, a variety of different departments. Uh, so we work with them. Uh, we both have the same uh, desires to promote STEM. And through that, we've done a lot of work and some research into uh, promoting uh, students' confidence, uh, specifically connecting with their ancestry of, of Mountain Pacifica students, um, and to connect them with careers. Uh, so it was a real easy pitch when we, we first started to talk to them. Um, they're looking to uh, enhance uh, the profile of Pacifica Maori students uh, in STEM careers and get them into their university. So essentially we said, hey, if you want to start uh, that journey, it needs to start in primary, um, and we're very happy to to support that and, and, and to start that journey, um, but we do need assistance. Um, so real easy partnership. Um, my class, uh, I think I forgot to mention in Otara, is 100% Pacifica and Maori. Um, so we were able to link culturally, but uh, with the same career aspirations as well. Uh, and like we would love for our students to be able to go to uh, Auckland. <laughs> So the next one here is uh, Manukau Beautification Trust. Um, and those of you who don't know it, uh, it's a nonprofit um, organization in Auckland. Uh, they hold some government contracts for graffiti removal. Um, I think they do quite well. Um, from that profit, they're able to uh, funnel that into their um, community work uh, and, and through a trust, I believe. So we, we currently work with them. Uh, and a variety of different projects, both uh, local, small, environmental um, projects. One of them being, say, you know, we uh, remove graffiti by painting over it with uh, murals, which we've done several of. Um, and then recently started a South Auckland environmental STEM initiative. So this was a really good opportunity for us to get involved in a different type of STEM activity, which focused on uh, environmental projects. So currently they're trialing out a um, uh, three schools in the competition, um, they're secondary schools. 
uh, we're really fortunate in the fact that um, we have a, a decent profile in our community. Uh, so we were asked to join this um, STEM initiative. This is just one way um, that we were able to gain more resources. Uh, there's obviously um, some support both financially and through businesses um, to get the project up and running. We're currently working with Aeroqual, uh, which is an air monitoring company. Um, they provide us with CO2 monitors, um, sensors for our classroom. Uh, and from there, we've uh, challenged another school. So what we're doing is we're looking at uh, measuring the CO2 in our classrooms uh, and then seeing which classroom can remove the most CO2 uh, using environmentally uh, friendly um, products or, or uh, innovations. So for us, <coughs> we're specifically using um, algae or contained algae in recycled bottles um, and just pumping air through it. Uh, so it's a really new initiative, um, but it's another perfect opportunity for us to get out there um, to connect. Uh, this is a group that works with a lot of other large companies. So once again, you know, we, we raise our profile, um, we get some more funding, and it's a perfect opportunity for our kids to, to um, do some STEM in a real life environment uh, that's going to help our community. So science organizations, we're really fortunate. Um, we've been quite successful through the uh, Curious Minds um, Fund and uh, participatory science platform as well. Um, and through that, essentially, you look at a, um, a science question and you partner up with a uh, science organization. Um, and for us, we've uh, mainly partnered up with Land Care Research, wonderful organization. Um, and they have really gone out of their way uh, to support us out of the kindness of their heart, um, initially just donating their time to, to help us. Uh, we currently have three projects with Landcare, um, which are, um, you know, it, it's wonderful to have one, but uh, three is uh, uh, amazing. Um, one we're looking at is uh, the, the students have gone out into the field and um, taken samples of fungi, and then from there we are identifying new species of fungi that we can go through the uh, naming process. Um, and I believe Karen, yeah, uh, one of your current uh, members was involved in that. She's been wonderful. Um, the other project that we're working on is to test uh, our homes in South Auckland for mold. Um, the first round we did that um, last year. We, we tested for the different types of mold. Um, and from there, we were able to recognize and identify some um, pathogens and, and, and some dangerous molds. Uh, this year, we're looking at uh, doing another further investigation. Uh, we just uh, recently uh, received some more funding. Uh, and from there, we're going to look at the actual quantities of mold so that we can correlate that um, with uh, health data that we have from the students. So real exciting stuff that makes a um, direct impact in our community, um, which is a, a big goal of ours. Um, the third one is uh, difficult to describe, but basically the kids um, designed this uh, um, device that holds uh, like a leaf um, that they use in uh, stream monitoring. Uh, and that one's really interesting in that um, because it's three oh, uh, because it's 3D uh, printed, they've shared it uh, overseas. Um, and my understanding is that Landcare has put in for <coughs> a grant um, for this project to go international, which would be amazing. And I'd love to uh, take uh, my class somewhere overseas next year. So fingers crossed. So some of the more interesting um, ways that we've developed our, our science ecosystem is through less uh, traditional means. So we work a fair amount with government in a variety of different um, uh, aspects. But one group that's really good to us is ATEED. So um, ATEED is Auckland Tourism Events and Economic Development. Um, so they basically uh, promote businesses and STEM careers. So we connected with them uh, early last year and said, hey, look, uh, we are, um, we're a STEM class. We want to connect with uh, STEM companies. Are you able to do that? Um, very fortunate that they work with some very, very high profile um, companies. So you can see TrueTest and uh, evidently online uh, Republic was spelled incorrectly. I missed that. but. Um, uh, True Test is a they are farming company. They develop uh, tests or um, pardon me um, fences. So they do um, fences on farms. 
um, but it's some pretty high tech goes into there with our RFID, radio frequency uh, ID badges, basically these little chips they put in the, the cow's ears. Um, and so we were able to go see, and they, they actually let us um, look at some of their, their prototyping and their actual manufacturing on site. So it was an amazing trip. Um, initially, to be honest, I didn't think it would be very exciting, uh, but it was probably one of the best um, trips we've taken. Uh, Online Republic, uh, they do a lot of um, uh, online sales uh, for tourism. Uh, so basically, you get cheap uh, airline tickets and cruise tickets online. Um, very fascinating in the actual office. Um, the kids really enjoyed this one as well because um, there's a lot of data um, mining that goes on. Uh, really interesting to see firsthand and to see how they're able to gather it and, and continually put up new websites. Um, for my students who don't traditionally leave Otara or, or go into the city very much, it, it's a wonderful opportunity um, for them to go and connect and, and you see you know, these big beautiful offices and, and to just expand their horizon about um, uh, other careers and, and other paths that they could do in their life. These companies are very, very happy um, to have you. So uh, they they were more than happy to um, provide transport and lunch and give the kids a tour um, with the idea that it's very, we very well known in Auckland and especially South Auckland that in order for New Zealand's economy to continue, we're going to need to um, further develop the resources, the human resources in South Auckland. Um, so most of these companies, you know, jump at the chance to uh, to engage. Um, the third company that's not on there um, that came and um, visited us was um, Rocket Lab. Uh, about as good as it gets for STEM. They brought in a real um, rocket engine, and uh, we shot off a little toy rocket. But uh, the general idea is that local government is really keen to see um, schools, uh, especially in, in the STEM science uh, area, succeed. Uh, and they're usually more than happy to uh, connect you with different businesses. It's probably a path that's not uh, traditionally recognized by people, especially in an elementary role. But they've been very good to us uh, and continually support us. So where our school is uh, situated, there is a, a large um, concrete manufacturing plant behind us. Um, and this is owned by Wilson Tunneling. I believe the, the entire group is called the Wilson Group. Uh, it's comprised of three different um, companies. Uh, general idea is quite a large company, um, very small profile. You know, the, their, um, their location is in the middle of the nowhere, or middle of nowhere behind our school. Um, we reached out to them and said, uh, we would love to plant some Cody along uh, the Cody trees. Sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, along their property line, which is um, you know a couple hundred miles or a couple hundred meters from our school, they jumped at the idea. Uh, I didn't realize at the time that there's a, a noise boundary that they must maintain. So, you know, if we wanted to uh, plant some trees, they were happy with that, um, and they donated uh, the trees, so about 35 Cody trees. Uh, it was a good opportunity for our students to be able to get some ownership um, over our park. Uh, we wanted some Tonga or um, some treasures for the students to, to be able to maintain. Um, and that came out of uh, the, the previous investigation with Landcare uh, into Cody Dieback or Phytophthora. Um, so the students were starting to create their own ecosystems, realizing that you know we've, we've done this. Uh, this wonderful science, um, how can we connect that back to our community? Uh, and they quickly learned that through the right connections and, and approaching groups the right way, because we wrote letters and, and whatnot, that they're able to, um, to start to control um, some of their community and their, their destiny um, by obviously altering the, the landscape. Um, so through there, uh, we've continued our relationship with Wilson Tunneling. Um, because they are directly behind our school, and uh, we assume that a fair amount of our community um, related to the school works there, uh, we asked if they would be keen to um, look at developing a, a, a concrete umu, so basically a giant fire pit at our school. They make concrete, so it's a um, perfect connection there. Um, they were more than happy to do that. Um, so they're currently building us quite a large uh, permanent umu. And then from there, we can have their um, their staff come over and, and enjoy um, 
traditional feast with us should we have one. Um, to be straightforward, Wilson um, uh, initially was just happy to do it without any recognition, um, but it is important, like I say, that we give back. Uh, we're in, we're creating these relationships long term, uh, and they won't benefit us if we're just taking or uh, in that situation we're just getting one or two one-off um, gifts or, or donations. So it's really important for uh, our school and our STEM program that we, we take it slow, we make sure that we're giving back to them as well in, in whatever way we can um, in order to really uh, have that mutually beneficial relationship. Uh, we try and do it with all the groups that we work with. Um, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's become a strength of our program. Um, in order for uh, my STEM class to continue at the level that it's at, we need a, uh, a great deal of support. So we're very conscious of that, uh, and we're definitely actively um, pursuing that. Well, yeah, that's it for me. Um, leave the questions or after uh, Alice's section. So I hope I didn't speak too quickly, or you guys were able to understand my accent. But like I said, it's a uh, pleasure to be able to present some of our journey today. And uh, yeah, I hope some of you will take uh, um, some meaningful um, ideas from it. Thanks very much, Nick. That was really great. Um, as Nick suggested, we'll go on to um, Alice. But before we do, I suggest um, when we come to the um, uh, questions, it might be useful to have people able to put their hands up. So if you put your hands up at the beginning, just when we were checking, um, you could hear everything. Um, could you please go up to the little um, person at the top of the um, in in the toolbar and uh, take your hands down if you haven't got them down already? Thanks a lot. Um, okay, Alice, um, over to you. Um, Nick, do you want to mute your microphone? Alice, you'll have to switch your mic on again. So over to you. Cheers. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to stop um, uh, Nick's one, which I've done, and I will uh, find yours. It's under share document, so I'll just pop it up now. Hang on. Slight glitch there, that one. Okay. Righto, so you've got control now, Alice, and um, I'll um, switch my microphone off and shut up. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you um, for giving me, giving me this opportunity to share our science learning. Um, and again, you know, after Nick is another presenter with an accent, so I hope you're um, able to um, understand my accent as well. So um, at Birkenhead Primary, um, Authentic science, we authentic science. We focus pretty much on participating in citizen science projects. And just a few points about why we are so interested in um, citizen science projects. We have a science inquiry model that emphasizes a hands-on approach and a real-world application of the learning um, they gain. So citizen science projects seem perfect for uh, achieving these uh, purposes. But also, um, science capabilities is very much essential to our program. Um, so when we look at uh, science capabilities, they're, they're more than skills and knowledge. And Rosemary Hipson talked about uh, children really willing and able to engage in science in their life. So that's that like key like the key component of our um, mission. And what better ways to do this than participating in citizen science projects? Children get a, a real buzz knowing that there's a real purpose to, to what they're doing and they are contributing to research and the data they 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 are very important to them. Um, Professor Hoffman, can you mute your screen? Excuse me, Alice, for a second. Um, I don't know whether you can go into your um, microphone um, control in the toolbar 
and maybe turn up your microphone volume because um, some folk are having difficulty hearing you. You're a lot quieter than Nick was. So um, maybe if you could try that, that might help. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Cheers. Yeah, is that any better now or? Sounds better I to me. I straight it onto high. Yeah, sounds better to me. I don't know about other people. We'll see. have a look uh, in the chat and see. Okay, right. I'll get out of the I way again. Better now? The be yeah, a little bit better only. <laughs> I try to have my microphone, uh, uh, microphone very close to my uh, to my mouth. Is that yeah? All right. Um, so. Uh, Professor Hosson from the University of Auckland, that that okay? Yeah. Um, he talks about really looking at um, the learning goals when you teach science and adjust the learning methods. So he talks about how we need to provide opportunities for children to learn science, which is the knowledge and the concepts, and to learn about science, which is the different methods and approaches. But he said that the only effective way to learn to do science is by doing actual science alongside a skilled and experienced practitioner. So citizen projects provide exactly that sort of um, learning opportunities because children are working side by side real scientists and the scientists will support the children and show them the ropes and thus facilitating the development of that attitude, skills, and disposition of a scientist. So um, I'm going to talk about um, just some of the, the projects that we are involved in. I'm sure you know, most of you know about uh, the more butterfly attacking. This is a very sort of easy um, uh, first project, uh, if you look at citizen uh, engaging children in uh, real science uh, research. Uh, and, and so all you need to do is just register all the tags, take the butterflies and record online. But you can also, children can also um, monitor whether they, the butterflies that they tag are actually being, uh, whether they have been cited by other people. The, another project we our children are a part of is RU, which is the New Zealand seismometers in schools. Now that is run um, by Dr. Casper uh, Van Wick and uh, Miller from uh, the um, University of uh, uh, Auckland. So we have the seismometer, which is you can see on the on the right. We've got a seismometer which is uh, connected to uh, the uh, a computer to the monitor. So you have live feed, you know, live data the whole time. And it is also connected to a GeoNet which tells you the last 50 quakes. So if you see any unusual, uh, like on the bottom right, if you see any unusual uh, display, you can uh, go back and check on the, um, the GeoNet. Again, we are contributing to to the to real data because Casper and Miller are actually using the data to, uh, for their research as well, and they are most happy to come to schools as well. They they um, come and run uh, educational activities for us. Um, can I just check whether people can hear me okay now or? Okay. Now my host, uh, I was with um, Dr. Wei. Uh, I was with Dr. Uh, Wei Hong Ji. Um, she was my host uh, um, for my uh, primary science teacher fellowship program, and I really appreciate. Um, that uh, that opportunity, having that opportunity, it got me very curious about birds, which I knew you know, very little about, um, and I learned a lot on my own and with other scientists. And really getting 
to have a have a better understanding of the whole science culture about the how open they are to being critique, you know, to, to debating ideas and this systematic approach that they take, um, the meticulous recording. So when I returned back to school, I thought, you know, how could I provide the same learning opportunities opportunities for my students? So I guess it is easier with uh, bird research, but I would really um, encourage you to discuss this with your host and to see how you can somehow continue to be a part and contribute to the research uh, projects that they are doing. Uh, and Wei Hong has been very uh, supportive. So we set up a semi-formal research partnership with her group, and we collect data, which is recording um, which is record oh which is um, recording the bird songs she provides it in the training she she comes to visit us show us how to do it and through the context uh, of the fellowship program i was able to also secure some funding to buy the equipment because they are quite expensive but we now um, our school ha has the mic and the recorder and so it makes it easier for us to contribute to the to her research so our arrangement is for us to go to her research site which is a a, um, a, a bush reserve um, and to collect and record uh, birds for uh, twice a year twice a year and then we came back and analyze um, and change and extract the data for her so it's really lucky that we're able to have a long-term research project and to have that ongoing relationship with a science research group as opposed to just a one-off or a short-term connections. And, and the children have a chance to witness the development uh, of science research and setbacks and, and it's very um, valuable for them to have that face-to-face -face contact with uh, real scientists as well. Um, because of that connection, we we have a oh, just go back to this slide. This is the the training um, at uh, Tavarunui Tavaru uh, Reserve and at our school, and we banded our own tui, tui as well. But because of that, um, it's, the children got very interested in. Um, in birds, and and so we started our own sort of inquiries, you know, spotting nests, um, and uh, monitoring nest and the nesting behavior, and we caught uh, uh, a few chicks uh, on the on the video. So on the on the left uh, bottom uh, side is the sonogram that we. We need to convert uh, the uh, convert and analyze the sonogram, and it's a great way that um, to draw children in, particularly girls. So if you note, if you uh, notice, we've got in our group we've got mostly girls, and in the in the in the interview they talked about how they surprised themselves for doing science because in their own words, we are not sciencey. And you need to be accurate, focused, and posh. That's the exact word, posh, to do science. And then someone, and then another girl uh, chipped in and said, "Yes, three things that we are not." So this is really good. I think that it's really good evidence that through this TUI research project, that these girls are really developing that disposition to engage in science, which they may not do if they haven't had that that experience. And I feel like we have given them the opportunity to discover and pursue science. Now, the, the projects that I've mentioned so far, they all happen uh, at lunchtime. So I sort of thought, you know, could we, how, how can we engage uh, more children and most of the children in our school in some real life, you know, real life science projects? Um, so. This term, we actually have the whole school 
um, doing the MM2, which is another um, uh, it's run by uh, Sally Carson from the University of Otago. It's basically surveying and monitoring local seashores. Now, citizen science projects are usually fun and they are engaging for children. But coming, if we come back to the New Zealand curriculum, its goal is about developing science literate citizens. So we have to take our focus back um, onto science capability. So the fact that children are participating in citizen science projects does not necessarily mean that they are actually thinking about science or developing the science capabilities. So for example, in doing the, all these science projects, it, they may look simple, but how can we be sure that they, the children will actually take the time to find out, the, for example, the protocols? So if they focus on capability three, which is critiquing evidence, oops, I just move this over a little bit. Yeah. Um, how can we be sure that they will take this time to find out the protocols and, and will actually follow them so that they are, at, they are actually gathering accurate data? So this disposition will stem from an understanding of the, the importance of protocols. And it is not something that we can um, achieve just by telling them, you know, follow these um, steps. Or, um, it is from really understanding why, we, why do we, what, what's the, what are the reasons for having those protocols? What might be the consequence of not following them? And how difficult was it for them, for example, to follow when they were doing the, the survey? and which parts were particularly difficult and so on. Um, so when we look at science capability three, critiquing evidence, that becomes, in this context, it becomes how can we make sure that our data, the data that we collect, is trustworthy for scientists to use. So for the two research project, for example, I asked um, the, 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 the group to go out and just do a bird count without making clear the protocols and we came back with all this quite a quite, a, quite different re results and that um, sparked off this conversation about you know why the results were, were so different and what do we need to do to make sure that we have more consistent and, and um, more consistency when we gather data and this is all new learning for most children um, for example, one of the our, our um, one of our um, year five children was very upset with uh, his his classmates because uh, he found out that they have uh, they have much higher counts than he had, and he's convinced he's, he's very sure that they must have cheated. So um, it is get, just getting them to understand that it is about protocols, and they are very important. So when we look at, um, for example, MM2, we, we provide, oops, we try to provide, particularly for the junior children, we try to provide learning activities that make them really understand why they have to follow certain protocols. For example, that's a, a year two class, and they were looking at what if we don't follow the protocols of having one square meter as the frame? If we have different frames, what would what would happen? And um, and it is not a. It's I think it is not just developing that capabilities and dispositions in children. It is also uh, developing that in teachers, because one of um, what happened is that one of the teachers, because we have to do, make uh, balls that are one that are. Um, uh, I think it's 10, 10, 10 centimeter in diameter. And the teacher came back to me and said, that, oops, I've, we, I found I've, um, all the balls were 20 uh, meters in diameter, millimeter, uh, centimeters, 20, I'm getting quite confused. <laughs> 
because I'm uh, um, because I'm uh, presenting. So uh, it's it's actually double the uh, diameter, and with, so to her, she thought that that was okay because it's just doubling the diameter without uh, understanding that it, that means that it is eight times the volume, and that will affect the you know greatly the the data. So it is so to me, it is about developing that dispositions and science capabilities. So um, that's all for me. Thank you. Thanks very much, Alice. That was really great, um, both of you. Um, I assume you'll, you'll be happy to have answer some questions. Um, so um, I'd like to kick off um, just to start with, and then what I'll do is I'll enable everybody's uh, microphones so that people can ask questions too. And I suggest that you um, ask one question at a time, and if someone else is speaking and you want to ask a question, use the hands up um, button just to show that you're waiting in the queue. So my question anyway to you two guys is, um, uh, when you're talking about this working with other organizations um, that are science-based, um, how do you go about initiating the contact with these external organizations? So who wants to answer that? Alice or Nick? Alice, do you want to, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, for me, I, like we are a little bit different from uh, Nick because I tend to choose um, uh, citi uh, the citizen science projects, so they are available to everyone. So it's a matter of searching um, on the um, internet for uh, science uh, citizen science projects uh, in New Zealand, and it is open. No, everyone can can uh, join. And, and the other one is, as I said before, is um, the connections uh, through my host. Thanks, Alex. How about you, Nick? Can't hear you, mate. Uh, Nick, can't hear you at the moment. How about that? That's better. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so for us, we work with a, oops, a variety of groups. Uh, general idea is that um, we network as much as we can. So, you know, if we, uh, we're doing a project and we needed, say, you know, environmental scientists or wh whatever that looks like, uh, we would just essentially send an email or make a call. Uh, you know, I've been turned down a lot of that. We look for support and partnerships, but, um, you know, just basically keep going forward uh, is, is the recommendation I would give. Um, we've been very fortunate to create a lot of our um, citizen science projects. Um, I think we're at like uh, five or six now. So um, through there, uh, we're able to dictate a little bit more about who we work with, which is really good. Um, and so we're just basically we'll connect with any group we can because uh, we have lots of projects on the go, uh, and and we're just you know constantly trying to um, see if groups will work with us. And often you know we we get a fair amount of no's, but we also get a fair amount of yeses. So that kind of keeps us going. So for me. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Um, questions from anybody else? Who would like to? Elise, have you got your hand up? I'm not sure. You want to ask something? Awkward anybody sound. else? <laughs> anybody else want to ask something? Don't be shy. Alice, yes. Um, can I just ask Nick, uh, with all those projects, how how uh, how are you finding the time to 
to do th all those projects? Is that just through is that through the whole school or is that your class in yeah? And how does that fit into your your class program? Yeah, so there is a little bit of secondary benefit um, to the rest of the school, but to be really honest, we're focusing on um, showing uh, the results of, of just one STEM class, um, and it is a lot, to be honest, uh, a lot of the different projects, but, um, you know, I just do the best I can, um, and, and so far, uh, it, we've been able to manage, like, a, a variety of projects on the go. Um, it's probably not for every program, like, we, we would typically... Yeah, we would have a lot of projects on the go, um, but it's good for us in, in a time frame in that lots of things, you know, hold up projects or uh, or things go wrong or, you know, groups um, will put things on hold for a while. So by ha having so many projects um, through the STEM class, because the, the students are constantly doing um, these these different uh, um, activities, um, that it, it enable, enables us to continually um, be working on something. Um, so, like right now, we would, yeah, I don't want to guess, I mean, 10 to 20 projects, um, but it's, it gives us something always authentic to read and write about, uh, you know, our maths as well. Um, so, we're a busy bunch. Hope that answers your question. Thanks, Nick. Um, Michael, you've got your hand up. Do you want to um, ask something? And then we've got Joe and Sandy, so I'll go in that order. Michael? Um, Michael, if we can't hear you, um, would you like to uh, type your question in the in the chat? Thanks, Michael. Um, while Michael's um, typing, Joe, do you want to, can, can, have you got a sound? Do you want to ask your question? I guess you might need to go to the um, toolbar at the top and unmute your microphones. That may be why we're not actually hearing you. Do you want me to answer okay, this one with Mike? Got his question. Uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, so uh, at at this point, um, Mike, you you need a question, um, so you come up with whatever the the, the science question that you want, and the uh, I personally physically write them. Um, so the most recent one we got uh, that wasn't was participatory science. Form. The scientists themselves wrote that. It's okay. It's intermittent, I think. But otherwise, they, um, you're switching because a much, much better idea of what that looks like, and kind of it, you know, help me with my writing. But it, it helps me to to understand the, the process uh, of. Oh. Sorry. Uh, of for example, me at uh, some at university, uh, and they were looking to do another um, to do a Curious Minds fund. Uh, so it, it's increased my um, capability and able to support others. Um, so that's you know for for me that that's like wonderful and and I, I'm really really excited to be able to do that. You know because I'm just like an average teacher. Oh, uh, Jen uh, is. Oh, no, this is for Alice. Jen. Nick, we're having a bit of a problem Alice, with your Do you sound. want to talk about the wider community? OK. Um, yes. Can you? Oh. Uh, yeah, so Jen, we, we have a fair amount of uh, involvement um, to be
really, really honest. Uh, so I can be a little bit, um, you know, obviously like stick out. It can be a little bit intimidating for them to the class. So we've met with all of our community, you know, Komatua, all the Kohanga Rio, um, all, all the different groups and our iwi. And then from there, um, it's made it a little bit easier for parents to come in. Still to this day, we have some tech in our class that's really advanced. So like um, RFIDs, we have laser cut, we have a laser cutter, uh, laser printers that we don't really use, or the 3D printer we don't really use. But um, general ideas, uh, they're happy to help, but it, it's pretty intimidating for them. Oh. oh, where's that? They've come. How do you make Thanks, the Nick. connections mutually beneficial? So I'll go with that one. Hopefully you guys. Oh. Do I go to the next one? I just keep going down the list. Okay, yeah. So, how do we make okay, the the connections mutually beneficial? Um, so, uh, at the beginning, like I give a lot of pitches. So, like basically, almost every day after school, I go for some sort of meeting or coffee or something like this. Uh, and the pitch is really simple for the mutually beneficial. South Auckland is like our community is full of STEM uh, employers. Um, they need employees in the future. You know, like you guys would understand this very well. So we've identified through research in the UK. I think it's uh, Archer, you know, 2010, whatever it is. But that uh, year five and six is where it's at um, to, for a career narrative. So basically, before they don't want to be a scientist or, or work in STEM. And so what we're telling the pitch we're making is, if you want to, um, you want to support us. You're supporting yourself in the future. A lot of that mutually beneficial turns out to be uh, like photos or um, like I, I can't even properly like articulate how many inter office or, or inter organization like write ups were in. Like it would literally be 30 or 40 at this point. Um, so they love to just say, you know, look, we had these little kids in from South Auckland and, and this is what they're doing. I think you would see that there's a lot of people as well without kind of ranting on that. Um, uh, understand the problem, want to help out, and love nothing more than to see our kids succeed. Um, so they're very, very happy to help. Alice, can other classes schools apply to be? Um, yeah, so so the idea, Alice, with the, the classes is if you uh, uh, basically made this statement to, to the business community, science community around our, our community, that if I had all that, the resources I needed, or essentially unlimited, what would that look like for our class? And what would the potential, like, what would the outcome be? Um, and you'd really have to look at the blog, but, like, it's pretty impressive. It, you know, like, um, it's hard to even be humble about the amount of things these kids have done. They uh, recently secured sponsorship from Lego to make this, uh, um, this uh, robotic double hauled waka. And then, you know, from there, now they're working with the Pacifica um, uh, Center at Auckland Uni to go out on a real, well, it's FACA, it's called. Um, so they just continually keep, you know, having these wonderful outcomes. And that's where we come from. We're a very outcome-focused class. Um, so the idea is that, like, we, we working with businesses with very clear timelines and, uh, and, and uh, achievement goals, and then from there, they just continue to keep meeting them. So, um, yeah, like I, I don't know if other schools would really want to do it. It's quite time consuming, um, but yeah, it's that's what we're doing. Um, how are we doing, Sandy? You, have you got a question? Sorry, I've lost track a little bit. Yeah. Talking. Uh, Sandy, was that was that you just talking? That was me, Jen. Jen, you've got a question, and Hello, I'll ask. Sandy, do you oh, want to type yours in the in the chat box? Yeah, we can hear. Yeah. Can I ask my question while I'm waiting for Sandy? Yeah, go on. I want to know, Nick, how you know, and because Alice talked a wee bit about this. There's no point just data collecting and engaging in citizen science unless the kids understand the connection to what they need to be learning in terms of the science curriculum. So how if we, how do you ensure that the kids just don't have a, do a lot of stuff 
that's all been enjoyable. How do you make sure that that learning is explicit? Yeah, so the, the, there's two parts to this, and that's a great question. Uh, and hello, by the way, Mr. Jen. Um, yeah, so uh, we've identified <laughs> we've we've identified through um, some surveys through our school um, that I, I made just about the confidence of our students. So we've identified that uh, about 80% of our school wants to say be a scientist, wants to work in STEM. Uh, and about 40% of them think they're smart enough. So the question was like, do you want to be a scientist? 80%, uh, are you smart enough to be a scientist? 40%, and a variety of um, different uh, occupations. So from there, we realized that our students uh, don't have confidence. So we, we've reached out uh, to a variety of different groups. Uh, we're currently um, shortlisted for teacher-led innovation fund. But regardless, um, we've been working on connecting the science that they're currently doing um, through uh, traditional stories, mainly Maui, um, to build up this uh, actual intrinsic confidence um, and belief, you know, that they, they come from a people that were uh, natural scientists, you know, you, you didn't make observations, you didn't adapt with the time on the island, you died, um, and they're learning some of the, the oral um, uh, histories and knowledge going into that, and they're taking that and realizing that, you know, I can be a good scientist, um, you know, I'm not, uh, for lack of a, a better term, like, they, they essentially think they're, they're dumb at this point, and there's a variety of social factors leading to that, but we're trying to, one, build them up, break that, and then, two, um, most of the projects we do are very clearly aligned to our community, so we tested mold in our community. Um, that was, you know, brought up through community um, uh, elders and, and, and activists, but the kids were the ones who actually brought it to fruition. So they're connecting things that um, their, their ancestors and past have done, and then now clearly connecting that to what is done uh, today in their class and how these things uh, affect their community. Um, and, and it's taken a lot of time, but uh, you're more than welcome if you're ever in Auckland. Um, for, young, for young students, uh, probably what gives them the, the best, um, uh, like building their, their reputation and, and whatnot, is they're clearly able to uh, articulate that and especially the females where they'll start to say, not only am I good enough, they can say, you know, in the STEM class, I'm learning the skills that traditionally I don't learn. You know, I can build a fence, you know, I, I can make the robots, uh, or whatever that is, but that um, I'm going to grow up and be a strong woman. If I don't want to be a scientist, well, I need scientists to be a mother. I need to know about vaccinations. And um, uh, my, my students can, can clearly articulate that. So regardless of where their STEM, if they become, you know, uh, uh, an employee of a STEM company or a scientist, um, they're starting to realize of the power of science historically and today, and that it's important to them. I hope that answers Thank you, your question. Matt. That's great. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. No, I was just wanting to delve a bit more deeply below, you know, your motivations. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. No problem. Nick, there's a quick question from Sandy on the chat. Yeah, so we got them from Aeroqual, which is, uh, they really do no business in New Zealand um, other than make them, and they're a Kiwi company. I think last night they won uh, Innovators of the Year, but um, they a uh, wonderful company. They, they've given us um, like a high-end monitor that uh, if you're in Auckland, yeah, you're more than welcome to borrow. Um, we're currently, our next citizen science project uh, has to do with uh, sensors, and we're actually going to build them. So what I would tell you is I can uh, easily get you plans for an inexpensive Arduino-based one um, that you can make with your students with like minimal soldering um, abilities. I'm not very good with any of that stuff, and I can make one, so I'm sure you can. Thanks, Nick. Um, we've, uh, it's now 8.32, so we've um, been going for an hour. Um, I'm just wondering uh, whether anybody else has any quick questions before we um, thank our presenters and wind up. Uh, anybody, if you've, got a, if you've got any questions, please put your hand up. And Alice, have you got your hand up, or is it up from a long time ago? Okay, thanks. All right, well, I'm
I'm just scanning through the list and I can't see anybody else with their hands up. So it remains for me just to um, thank you both, Alice and Nick. Really fascinating um, session and um, I've learned heaps. Um, I'm going to be watching the recording, assuming it records um, okay. Um, and uh, I wish all of you um, a, um, a, a nice rest of the evening. Keep warm, it's beginning to get cold and horrible. Um, and once again, thanks, Alice and Nick. Um, yeah, bless you. Cheers. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Okay, I'm going to end the meeting now. So um, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, it's been good. Good night.